Leviathan here after just a few months with the McLaren, it broke. As the title suggests, it was a very expensive and catastrophic failure which took months to complete. So up next is the story of what happened to the McLaren. Let's start at the very beginning. Towards the end of last season, I was out for a spirited drive. When I go to start up the car, I hear a very, very rough idle, followed by a symphony of alarm bells. And then I was left in an eerie silence as the engine died out with a warning message which read, oil, pressure, low. I was optimistic that this was nothing more than just a faulty sensor, as the car was actually with McLaren just one month prior for a brake job. I contacted McLaren to let them know what was going on, and to err on the side of caution, they sent over a truck to come and collect the car. The diagnostics. So this is a process that took two weeks to complete. The McLaren had to undergo a series of tests. Most interestingly, one of them was actually to listen to the rhythm of the engine with a stethoscope. A stethoscope. What I assumed to be nothing more than just a faulty sensor turned out to require a full engine out procedure to replace the cylinder head and cam phasers. The repair took two months and what I have before me is exactly what happened. Let me warn you, it's long. One, two, three, four pages long. The technician inspected cylinder heads with a stethoscope while the engine was running and found that the right hand exhaust cam phaser was substantially louder than the rest. This indicates that the locking pin inside the exhaust camshaft failed. <laughs> McLaren inspected the pictures and advised replacement of the right hand cylinder head. <sighs> Tech confirmed that the cylinder block was okay. The vehicle was then reassembled and cleaned for delivery. And it doesn't stop there, there was one more failure around the suspension. Technician inspected suspension fluid level and confirmed the level was too low. It was found that the rear right suspension accumulator was leaking. The technician depressurized the suspension system, gained access to the accumulator and replaced with a new unit and then bled the system. Once completed, the system was repressurized and inspected for leaks, followed by a road test and final assembly. No further leaks were found. And after all this, another issue popped up. Tech inspected the crank sensor as outlined by technical support and found that it was soaked in with clutch fluid overflowing at some point. Technician replaced sensor with a new part as a precaution to be released to the customer. So what was the charge for the entire repair? Well out of warranty it would have been $30,000. Considering that this car was still under factory warranty it cost me NC. No charge. So what was this experience like? Well, credit where credit is due, McLaren was extremely professional throughout the entire experience. Not only did they give me detailed updates every step of the way, but I also got this free hat. What worried me most was not the fact that I didn't have a car that I just got for two months with no loaner, but whether or not this repair would actually be covered under warranty or not. While this is not a common issue, it is certainly a known issue. And outside of warranty, people actually had to pay out of pocket for this. Speaking of warranty, McLaren has now matched Ferrari's extended warranty program. So you can now purchase extended warranty for up to 12 years at a price. There are differences in coverage between your factory warranty and extended warranty, which I'll talk about in another episode. Does this change my view about McLaren at all? 
Absolutely not. I still love this car. It's the dual personality of this car. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. On the surface, it seems civilized. You get heated seats, you have comfort suspension, you even have cruise control, which I've never used before. But underneath it all is the heart of an animal. It's a beast, it's a pure extreme race car. And we can't forget the level of engineering that goes into this car to deliver the amount of performance it can achieve. 204 mile an hour top speed. This car is phenomenal when it comes to power. And we can't forget what lies beneath. This is really a true race car with a few luxuries on top. Anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time.